Welcome everyone uh, to the final Ascend TV Life on the Autism Spectrum broadcast of 2021. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. And today we have a special guest interviewer, Paul Nussbaum, who will be interviewing our guest, uh, Matthew McCabe, Curriculum Director and Lead Trainer of Ascendigo, an organization of which uh, Paul Nussbaum is very much a part as well. But before we begin, Got to ask you, normally you wear a t-shirt. Well, this time you're wearing a sweater. What's with that? The, re the reason I'm, I'm wearing it is because yesterday was Christmas. This is my annual Christmas sweater. I wear it every year to, to celebrate the holidays. So it's the easiest way to get into the spirit. Very, very good indeed. Well, thank you, Will. Would you like to um, get into uh, it with our guest? I'd be glad to. Matthew, tell us about your background with Ascendigo. Awesome. Thank you so much, William. It's a real pleasure to be here with you guys uh, as you know we get through the holiday season here and uh, embark on a new year together. Uh, thank you guys very much. It's an honor to be here. Um, that's a great question, Will. Um, my background with Ascendigo goes back um, almost 12 years now. As, uh, this is my 12th year with Ascendigo. Um, when I started with this organization, um, it was very much in its infancy, um, which is really such a cool thing for me to be a part of. Um, when I started with Ascendigo, we were called Extreme Sports Camp, actually, um, and we were very much a summer camp program. Um, when I first started, um, we were actually in a, in a basement in a townhome in Basalt, Colorado with myself yeah. and only one other employee. Um, so it was very much, you know, in its infancy, um, which was really cool because that's given me an opportunity to, you know, um, create a lot um, within the organization and, and help steer it um, to the place that it is today. Tell us about the adventures and um, that you've had with, with Ascendigo. Awesome. That's a great question. So, yeah, as I was saying, you know, when Ascendigo started, actually, um, almost about 17 years ago, we started as a summer camp only, and that's really all we did for, for many years. And um, there's some really cool things about the Ascendigo summer camp program. Um, for starters, we maintain, we actually exceed a one-to-one -one staff to camper ratio everywhere we go. Um, which is really unique and, and really special in the autism world. Um, we also, we have no behavioral restrictions whatsoever, and we don't turn any clients away. Um, so anybody that's looking for that summer camp experience, a real formative and transformational experience, uh, we have open doors to anybody and everyone. Um, and it, typically at summer camp, um, we are, our, our campers will sign up for a core sport and the four core sports that we offer are um, whitewater kayaking and rafting, climbing, horseback riding, and powerboat lake sports like wake surfing and wakeboarding and water skiing and that kind of stuff. And the reason we do this core sport model is, you know, um, in addition to just wanting to give folks that traditional summer camp experience that we know how powerful it is. We know how transformational it can be. Um, we also want to take it a step further and we really want to teach skills associated with these sports with the goal of, you know, creating lifelong athletes and, you know, finding ways to integrate, you know, outdoor recreation and exercise <laughs> into our daily lives. It's so important for, you know, all people and, you know, especially folks on the autism spectrum that might be experiencing barriers to accessing, you know, these fun outdoor activities. Um, so, you know, during summer camp, um, you're signed up for a core sport. We have highly trained staff uh, providing that one-to-one -one support. And, you know, they're gonna develop a lesson plan for the week. Um, an individualized lesson plan based on the camper's yeah. own goals and desires and wants and needs. Um, and we're really going to try to teach some of these skills. So if you sign up for the river sport program, we're going to hope that, you know, by the end of your time uh, as a camper, you're going to know how to paddle your own boat, put on your own gear, you know, how to take care of your equipment, all of those kind of essential skills that um, are a part of 
participating in any of these activities. Um, and then each afternoon, you our campers get to go experience one of the other uh, sports that we offer, you know, horseback riding or, or oh, yeah. surfing um, or climbing. And that creates a really great environment where we get a lot of repetition and time to teach skills, but a lot of novelty and a lot of just new experience. And um, it just creates a really awesome environment. And that's our summer camp. Do you serve autism or students with other disabilities? Oh, that's a great question, Will. Um, Ascendigo was certainly born out of the need to serve people on the autism spectrum, um, but we are open. Uh, to anybody and everybody. And um, as we'll talk a little bit more about the curriculum and the Ascendigo way that we've developed, yeah. which is our methodology, um, these evidence-based methods that we um, implement at our program, they work with anybody and everybody. So, you know, it's not uncommon for us to have some folks that might have a physical disability or visual impairment, or, you know, maybe they don't have a formal autism diagnosis, but you know, they're suspected to be ADHD or um, any number of other, you know, possible conditions and anybody and everybody is welcome to come join us at our program. We'd now like to uh, go over to our guest interviewer, Paul Nussbaum, who will take it from here. Yeah. Paul? Okay. Well, thank, thank you, Keith. And it is a, it is a pleasure to, to be on, be on this show uh, today. And it's also, a, it's a pleasure to be, uh, showcasing Ascendigo and all the wonderful things that they that they've done and are are doing and uh, they've as Matt said they're grown they they have grown quite a bit from from their early days and they're continuing to expand and continuing to innovate and that really that gives me a lot of inspiration and and I've I've been with this organization for a number of years I serve on their board and also I've worked in the summer camp in various capacities uh, several times and done a lot and also I'm on the spectrum myself and I have done uh, a number of autism advocacy projects for the last 20 years uh, namely which includes doing expeditions uh, and one of them was uh, a Trans Sierra project crossing the Sierras on skis back in 2006 to raise awareness for, for autism. So, and so anyways, uh, Matt, if it's okay with you, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions about Ascendigo, if that's, that's okay. I'd love that, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So uh, one of them, one of them that was curious to me, I know you mentioned the curriculum project and do you want to just go into it a little bit, describe the curriculum project and what it, I mean, and well, what what its objectives are? Absolutely, Paul. It's a great question. Um, interestingly enough, I'm transitioning uh, right now as we speak. I've I've been serving as the adventures director at Ascendigo, oh, for at least the last six years or so, and I'm actually changing roles right now to focus um, solely as the curriculum director and lead trainer. So it's very present um, and and. Um, feels like a big transition in my life that I'm super excited about. And I'd love to tell you more about uh, the project. So um, really the curriculum project goes back all the way to the very origins of Extreme Sports Camp and Ascendigo. And um, as I said, I've been working on both the adventures and the curriculum for, uh, this is the my 12th year working on those projects. And um, to kind of put a little context into the curriculum and why we believe it's so important, um, you know, when we first started here many years ago, um, it was just a really unique environment. Um, you know, most of the training and resources that are available right now uh, to support the autism community come, you know, straight from the world of applied behavioral analysis. Yeah. And of course, at Ascendigo, we're big fans of ABA and, um, you know, we have BCBAs on staff. Um, but we also sometimes notice that that world can come off as a little dry, as a little clinical, right. as um, not so person-centered all the time, all, right. although they're trying to move in that direction. And, um, and we didn't really love all of that, you know, and um, we were in this really unique environment where, you know, we didn't have, in the early days, we didn't necessarily have clinicians 
working out in the field with us. We were guided by clinicians, um, but we had professional kayakers and skiers and uh, mountain climbers right. and alpinists right. and you know folks like Paul Nussbaum um, yeah. that were just people persons and um, you know really connected to nature and connected to their environment and the people around them and. And on top of that, you know, we were not born in a clinic. We were born no. in the mountains. We were born on the rivers. Um, we were born in the natural right. environment and not just any natural environment. Um, you know, one of the most extreme natural environments that you can think of moving down a, a whitewater river, you know, um, and, right. and, <laughs> it was just a very unique situation. And what we found was we were having tremendous success with our participants. They were showing up for a week or two weeks of camp. And the first day we would see very extreme behaviors, but as they started to settle into our program and our methodology and our environment, right. The, the transformation was so powerful that the most unwanted behaviors would all but disappear. And I've seen it. And you've seen it firsthand. I've seen it firsthand. um, And we know that it's true. And so we started to get to work and say, what is it that we're doing differently? And why is it so effective? And how can we teach other people how to do this? One thing I will say about the curriculum is it's very personal. It's applied to the situation, whereas other yes. other curriculums are more like, as you mentioned, Matt, more clinical from yes. test yeah. from so called from test test results. Not saying that they're not valid, but exactly, but the and they are valid. They they do work, is, but it's it's not the only way, and that's exactly right. And you know. Our environment is so dynamic and so fluid, it's impossible to write a behavioral plan um, that's gonna work in this fluid and nuanced environment. So we train our staff to think on their feet, to use creativity and problem solving, and right. to use you know, evidence-based methods um, to, you know, to guide their campers towards success in independence, and we found it to be very, very effective. And I and I have to agree, and, I, and I've seen it, and and I have to agree that that has that has been the results that it's been very effective, and actually applying applying what we learn to the situations. Absolutely, and so now we're at a really amazing place that. Um, we've done, you know, one round of program evaluation that was backed by um, a university here in Colorado, where we're, we're measuring the outcomes, and we saw uh, statistically significant improvements in things like, um, you know, communication, um, uh, task initiation, confidence. Um, uh, and we've seen things like uh, self injurious behavior markedly reduced. Um, the outcomes have been really, really powerful. And so right now we're in the process of um, taking that program evaluation to the next level. And we're designing a research project in collaboration um, with the University of Colorado. Um, and we hope to, um, through this first research project and many more to follow, to show that you know, this naturalistic way, uh, this Ascendigo way is actually more effective than, you know, sitting in a clinic and learning these same skills um, in that setting. I have to, I have to agree, Matt. I mean, that's from what I've seen in both situations, I I have, I have to agree. (laughs) You know, and it's like to, to give an example, because it's, it's fairly abstract what I'm talking about, but the difference is, you know, is sitting in a clinic and trying to teach someone to tie their shoe for M&Ms or, you know, standing at the side of a beautiful outdoor rock climbing wall and teaching somebody to tie their climbing shoes so that they can go climb this this beautiful feature or teaching them to tie their wakeboard Mm -hmm. boots so that they can go surf behind the boat. 
And we found that that kind of intrinsic motivation is just so much more reinforcing than, you know, convincing somebody to learn their tie their shoes in exchange for a couple of M&Ms. I have to agree. I think that would be for all of us, not just, not just people on the spectrum. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, that's the beauty of this training curriculum is, you know, it was designed looking through the lens of autism, which I think is such a helpful lens to look at the world through. Um, but these principles and these methods that we've developed and um, they absolutely work for any and all people. Um, the training that we've developed, we call it neurodiversity training because it's very much gonna work for you know, folks on the autism spectrum, folks with, you know, ADD, and even, you know, folks that we call neurotypical. Um, these, these methods work for anybody and everyone. They're grounded in, in behavioral science and, you know, all human beings behave. What we'll now do is our book correspondent, Jennifer Brooks, has a question for our guest. Uh, yes, Matthew. As somebody with a master's degree in statistics, I'm curious to know more about your research methodology. And do you have plans to publish your findings in a scientific journal? Oh, that's an awesome question, Jennifer. And uh, with your background, if you want to come out this summer and help us with this project, we'd sure love that. Oh, um, I would love to. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. So um, we are partnering with uh, the University of Colorado and specifically um, one of their researchers that we've known for many years. Um, and so they'll be designing the research project uh, in collaboration with us. And the hope would absolutely be to publish these findings. Um, but, you know, that's a, I'm not a researcher myself. Um, so that's a little bit out of my wheelhouse. But um, with the partnership, we sure hope that we can publish this paper and many more to come. Uh, we really, we really believe in what we're doing here. We really think it's unique. And we really think the rest of uh, the community and the field of applied behavioral analysis can learn from what we're doing. Um, and, and we really believe it's um, the most compassionate and most effective way to support our friends on the autism spectrum. And so we do very much want to influence the rest of the field with our methods and with our you know, hopeful findings and publications. Also, uh, our cultural correspondent, Stacey Kennedy, has a question for our guest. Yeah, my question is, um, I was wondering if, uh, if you ever had people like Temple Grandin or, or any other inspired public motivational speakers ever participate in your organization? That's a great question. Um, I, we have had the, the absolute pleasure of having Temple Grandin out here with us to provide us training. Um, and she did come out and, and look at our ranch program. And um, we also, in addition to that, we have an incredible, you know, board of directors, Paul Nussbaum is one of which, and he absolutely meets that criteria that you just described without wanting to just get into kind of name dropping. I, you know, our, our board of directors is um, published on our website. I'd encourage you guys to, uh, to check that out. Uh, I believe we certainly stand on the shoulders of giants uh, here to send to go. Yeah. Um, some of our board members have done some really incredible things for the community um, from both, you know, research to clinical advocacy and et cetera. Um, we've had many other great minds um, help build our organization to what it is, as well as, you know, there's some really incredible humans out there that, you know, have children on the autism spectrum that have come to our camp as participants, some of which are, you know, at the forefront of research again oh, advocacy yeah. um so yes absolutely um we've had an incredible you know collaborative uh relationship with many many experts um to get us to go to where it's at to, today will uh you have a question for uh, matthew at this point what was your favorite trip in in a to, to take in a to go now that's right. a fun question um so many things are jumping out at me when you ask that but I have to say my favorite trip I've ever done with the Syndigo, and there's been many. Um, I once had a client actually uh, from Saudi Arabia, and they flew me to Courchevel, France, to teach skiing to their child. Um, and that was a very special experience. Um, I haven't done a, that's actually the only time I've left 
the continent um, and to do it for work was really special. And I was just so impressed by the mountains and the culture of France that I'd really love to go back and do that again sometime. Speaking of skiing, uh, Paul Nussbaum has some questions uh, regarding skiing uh, for Matthew. Okay, thank, thank you, Keith. So anyways, uh, Matt, Matt, you wanna, Matthew, do you wanna tell us about the, the ski school at Ascendigo? Cause I know that they've, they do, they've had some, they've done some very impressive things and had some very impressive results uh, with, with the ski school and reaching our, reaching our community. Absolutely. Yeah. So something again, that's very unique and special about Ascendigo is um, we are the only autism specific ski school that's registered with the Professional Ski Instruction Association of America. Um, so um, we run, you know, from Thanksgiving until about mid-April, we run a, a ski school based out of um, the four mountains of Aspen Snowmass. And again, it's, uh, it's that one-to-one -one instructional model. Our instructors are highly trained in autism and neurodiversity and adaptive skiing. And um, our, our methodology and our approach is very unique and very effective. Um, the adaptive skiing world was really born out of you know, helping uh, people with physical disabilities learn how to ski and enjoy the mountain. You know, so it's people that are paralyzed or quadriplegic or um, also very much rooted in um, uh, visual impairments and uh, blind skiers. Um, you know, every mountain in the country, or at least most, or at least the well-established ones, they have an adaptive ski program, but their methods and their equipment was designed for helping physical people with physical disabilities to learn to ski and people with visual impairments. So often, you know, people on the autism spectrum don't necessarily fit into that mold. And, you know, that traditional adaptive um, progression often includes a lot of equipment, um, specialized equipment, strapping things to, to people's skis. And we kind of found that to be, um, unnecessary and even stigmatizing at times. So our method is much more naturalistic, much more person-centered and really involves uh, getting to the fun as quickly as possible, getting that wind in the skier's face, allowing their, their body and their skis to feel these sensations that are intrinsic to the sport of skiing. And once we've kind of got those hooks in and we know they're having fun and we know they're loving it, then we start to work backwards towards independence and teaching skills. All the while we're using the Ascendigo curriculum and our data collection system to track progress for the skiers and really make sure we're setting them up for a lifelong pursuit of enjoying the sport of skiing. Matt, and, and these, are, these lessons, these are specifically designed for people on the spectrum. Yeah, that's exactly right, Paul. It's uh, it's using the Ascendigo way and uh, the the Ascendigo curriculum and methodology and tailoring the lessons specifically to the individual with autism. Matthew, can you tell us about some of the additional programs that Ascendigo has? Absolutely. Yeah, as as I started saying, you know, we we were we started as a summer camp. Um, but we've since expanded our services uh, into many different domains. Um, so the summer camp and the ski school, they fall under this umbrella called the Adventures Department. The Adventures Department also has some locals programs, including a Saturday Adventure Club um, and a number of other ways that you can get involved. Um, in addition to that, we have our Life Enrichment Department at Ascendigo, and that is a year-round um, whole life service for adults on the autism spectrum. So it includes everything from vocational coaching, you know, getting a job, learning to do the job. Um, there's, a, there's a huge recreation component to our life enrichment program. So our adults are typically, you know, performing their jobs in the morning, getting a chance to ski in the afternoon and learning skills about, you know, ADLs and, and independent living in the evening. So it's very much a holistic uh, program. Um, and these adults are, are living um, in a host home here in, in Carbondale, Colorado, and we're providing them services year round. 
additionally, we have an outreach program, which is um, uh, ABA program and early childhood intervention program where we have therapists going, you know, into the home, into the community, as well as at the, at the clinic setting and, and doing, you know, applied behavioral analysis to teach, you know, critical and pivotal skills um, to young folks on the autism spectrum. And most recently, um, as I mentioned, I am uh, stepping away from the adventures department and we are really kind of going all in um, on this, the, the curriculum project. So it's kind of, it's a standalone service within Ascendigo now. And um, the, you know, the mission of the curriculum project is um, really to, to break down barriers for the community. Um, what we've found over time is, you know, so many families all across the country um, are feeling stuck. They're being told no a lot. They're, they're not having success when they try to go into the community or when they try to do, you know, activities and recreation. And so we've built a um, suite of training products and resources that we call the curriculum of the Ascendigo Way. And we're already starting to partner with local schools. Um, we're partnering with organizations across the country. And the goal really is to, through training uh, and education, to really empower uh, families and communities. And the example I always give is, you know, let's say there's a rock climbing wall in San Francisco. And, you know, there's, there's families in San Francisco that aren't having access to these things and they're they're feeling the barriers, but let's say, you know, mom's walking down the street and she happens to walk across the, uh, the rock climbing wall and she sees a sticker on the wall that says trained by us indigo. And if that mom then gets the courage to go, you know, go to that front desk and say, can you guys work with my son or daughter on the autism spectrum? And, and, and that staff member, that faculty has been trained understands um, the, the, the needs of, of individuals on the autism spectrum and can deliver a highly successful, highly motivating experience for that young person and for their family. What more powerful thing can we try to do for the autism community than that? So um, that's really the final um, department within Ascendigo. And um, that's where I'm spending uh, a lot of my energy these days is really trying to train and educate the communities so that families with autism feel empowered to go into the community and to participate and to, you know, experience these enriching activities for themselves. Excellent, excellent. Going forward into 2022, uh, can we expect to see some uh, new programs and initiatives from Ascendigo? And then finally, if our viewers are interested in learning more uh, about Ascendigo, how can they contact you or other members there? Great question. And I, I think I started to read your mind and answer that question with my last one. Um, but you can find us at www.ascendigo.org. That's A-S-C-E-N-D-I-G-O. Um, also, our, our search optimizations uh, very nice. So if you just type in autism camps or Colorado autism, you'll certainly be able to find us that way as well. Um, and certainly in 2022, our, you know, our big initiative is, is this curriculum uh, project. I have recently partnered with Aspen High School and we are training their teachers in the Ascendigo Way curriculum. Um, we are um, actively partnering with a couple of organizations across the country to replicate our curriculum and methodology in other places. Um, and we're also always innovating and involving what we're doing right here. Um, we're hoping to launch a new after school program for locals um, here in this, this calendar year, um, as well as many, many other exciting things that uh, we're looking forward to, to bringing to the world. Thank you very much, Matthew. It sounds like there's a lot upcoming uh, for Ascendigo. And uh, I know a number of our people will be very interested in learning more. What we will do is we will turn over to our uh, book correspondent, Jennifer Brooks. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. I am Jennifer Brooks, your book correspondent for Life on the Autism Spectrum. And today, I would like to tell you about the book, All Cats Are on the Autism Spectrum by 
Kathy Hoopman. You may be familiar with an earlier version of this work, which is titled, All Cats Have Asperger Syndrome. However, that term has fallen out of favor in recent years. And thankfully, we have also learned a great deal more about the nature of autism spectrum disorder since the first book was written. Unfortunately, that uh, progress has come too slowly to benefit many of us, but progress is still progress and any progress at all should be celebrated. Now this book, it is a picture book. It has many, many pictures of adorable cats. And really, who doesn't love a cute cat photo? <laughs> so this book is a great introduction for people of any age, young children, because they're attracted to picture books. They could read it on their own, or an adult could read it to a child, or an adult could read it to themselves to learn about the nature of autism spectrum disorders and understand the characteristics of people who have it, such as, for example, heightened sensitivity. We all know that cats hate taking baths, don't we? And yes, if uh, someone is wearing a very strong perfume that can drive somebody on the autism spectrum crazy. It can distract them from paying attention to what the person is trying to communicate. And also, most of us wouldn't notice if dinner was 2.42 minutes late. And if we did, most of us would go, come on, what's the big deal? It's two minutes. Why don't you uh, take the time to enjoy the two minutes of your life by you know, having a, a pleasant conversation with the person you're with? Or if you're alone, these 2.42 minutes would be a perfect time to read a book such as All Cats Are on the Autism Spectrum. You could use that time to learn something instead of uh, wasting it, being upset. And also, you know, there's the, uh, there's the old cliche, if you've met one person with autism, then you've met only one person with autism. Not everyone on the autism spectrum is the same. You certainly don't all look the same and have different characteristics. Some of them are exceptionally good at math, others not so much. Some prefer to eat only certain foods. Some really can't tolerate being touched. Some really can't tolerate any change in routine. Some are obsessed with trains or dinosaurs, but not everyone. And so you can't assume that just because someone has those characteristics, they're on the autism spectrum. You can't assume that just because someone doesn't have one of those characteristics, they're not on the autism spectrum. But uh, one thing that most people on the autism spectrum do have in common, and this includes yours truly, is finding body language difficult to read. I'm sure this one cat would like to be friends with the other cat, but just can't make sense of what the other cat is thinking or feeling about the first cat. And years ago, there was a song that says, you never know just how you look through other people's eyes. That's about 10 times as true for someone on the autism spectrum as it is for so-called neurotypical people. So once again, this book is an excellent introduction toward helping people of all ages understand the nature of autism spectrum disorders and those who are affected by it. And it even includes a foreword written by Haley Moss, 
who has been a guest at at least one meeting of ASEND and or the Stanford Neurodiversity Project. I can't remember exactly where, but I believe I have met her at least in a video conference. And she says that she was 13 years old when she read this book for the first time. And you might think a teenager would feel insulted. A picture book? Oh, come on, I'm not a freaking baby anymore. But no, she loved this book. And not just because of the adorable cat photos. It would be hard for anyone to resist. I mean, really, what could be cuter than that? You know, she also said this was a great resource. And she kept this book on her desk all through her academic and professional life. And she uses it as a resource to help people understand why she is a little bit different from other people and may not always behave the way that other people expect her to. So once again, this is All Cats Are on the Autism Spectrum by Kathy Hoopman. Highly recommended. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jennifer. Always appreciated. We'll now hear from uh, Stacy Kennedy, our cultural correspondent. Saturday, uh, January 1st, New Year's. Um, there's this Autism Families Rodeo Lagoon Loop Walk that's going to happen in um, Mill Valley on 11050 Mitchell Road. So Mill Valley, which is pretty much past Marin and and, um, and the Golden Gate Bridge, et cetera. And um, so that'll be happening in Mill Valley, California and um, Marin Headlands and I think it says Headlands, um, Rodeo Beach. They're accessible from the Alexander Avenue exit of 101, uh, just north of the Golden Gate Bridge. And um, following the two signs, following the signs to enter from the Bunker Road um, changed uh, to a one way downhill. So as we know, most one ways here. Um, cell phone access will be spotty, but if you move around, um, you might be able to get a, a signal or so. The person to talk to about this, her name is Lisa Lewis. You can um, email her at lewis at sonic.net. Um, you can also go to hikingautism.com. So January 1st, 2022 is an Autism Families Rodeo Lagoon Loop Walk. Um, Saturday, uh, January 8th will be an outdoor fitness in Cupertino, which is south, um, more near San Jose. Um, it'll be a class be taught by someone very certified and an adaptive um, trainer and former para, Paralymp... I, I don't know if he, it's Paralympian or Legion. Uh, his name is Nathan, Nathan Perkins, and um, he will be teaching the fitness class. And if you want to reach him, 831-459-7210. And again, this is in Cupertino off of Stevens Creek Boulevard, California, 21121 Stephen Creek's Boulevard. Um, and my last thing, Tuesday, January 11th will be uh, a Zoom call meeting starting at noon um, for Network for Autistic Professionals um, held every uh, second month, um, every second Tuesday of the month. And um, they're always looking for neurodiverse uh, people like to learn networking and share and, and just, uh, and participate in, um, or even just lurk. You could just come in the Zoom and listen. Um, and it will be recorded and posted later for those who won't be able to uh, show up. So again, this is a network for autistic professionals being held uh, on Zoom January 11th. And um, for sure, um, you'll take a look at the, you'll go to intake at L, L evolibri.com, but I'll just give you the ID anyways, 990-528-4397, uh, and the passcode is capital E as an elephant, V as in Victor, O, capital L, I, B as in boy, R, 
Hi. That's it for our final show of 2021. So hope you've had a good 2021 and an even better 2022. Uh, for SEND, uh, Life on the Autism Spectrum, I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. And I'm Jennifer Brooks. I'm Stacey Kennedy. I'm, I'm Paul Nussbaum. And I'm Matthew McCabe. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next year. Take care.